Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of the Ramadan series Motivations. Um, today's motivation comes from an ayah in the Quran which most of us are familiar with. It's in Surah Ali Imran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billah min shaytan rajim كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَحْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ The ayah actually continues, but this sentence many of us are familiar with. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, You are the best nation, extracted for humanity. You command what is good, and you forbid what is evil, and you believe in Allah. Now, many of us, when we read this ayah, or when we hear about this ayah, we pay much more attention to the uh, first part, which is you are the best nation extra extracted for humanity, than the second part. Um, so we start to think that we are the best nation just because of who we are. We are the best nation automatically because of our identity and because of our uh, predis uh, predispositions. Now if we think that way, then what's the difference between us and the Jewish people who think they are the chosen people? Right? Well, we criticize that thinking and that claim. So people would think that you Muslims have, have double standards. You're criticizing the Jewish people for claiming to be the chosen people of God, and then you are claiming the same thing. And, and so that's why we have to understand that this ayah is not talking about an automatic uh, entitlement or qualification. Mujahid, the great Mufassir, rahimahullah, he says that Kuntum khayra ummatin nas ala shara'itil matkura fil ayah. That you are the best nation extracted for humanity is upon the condition of what is mentioned in the ayah. And what is the condition? He says that the condition is Amru bil ma'ruf wa nahyu anil munkar wal imanu billah. The three things that Allah mentioned in this ayah. That you command what is good, you forbid what is evil, and the faith in Allah. So he continues to explain that in other words, if you fulfill these conditions, if you are a person who is uh, involved in these actions of commending what is good, forbidding what is evil, and believing in Allah actively, then you are also qualified for the title, for the honor of being the best nation. Uh, uh, in contrast, if you do not fulfill the conditions, if you are not involved in the actions mentioned as the condition, then you are also not qualified for the title, khair, khair umma, the best ummah. So it's not automatic, it's not because of your birth. It is not because of your, uh, you know, uh, intrinsic um, characteristics. It is rather because of your actions and your decisions and your choices and your lifestyle. So, um, that means this is very important, to command what is good, to forbid what is evil, and to believe in Allah. Why is this important? You see, Islam is not a religion that proposes everyone for himself. We see in the word that individualism has come to ex its extreme, right? Uh, when Professor Jonathan Brown came to Hong Kong, he gave a lecture about human rights, and he gave an interesting example. He said, nowadays in the United States, if someone wants to burn himself to death, other people probably will say that, well, if he's not hurting anyone, then that's his choice, that's his right, he can do that, right? So individualism has gone to an extreme of you can do whatever you want. As long as you can justify for it, as long as you have, you're not hurting anyone else, then you can do whatever you want. And obviously, for any rational and intelligent human being, that's too much. That's just not smart, right? That's just not uh, the wise way of living. So Islam actually emphasizes uh, social well-being and communal well-being. It emphasizes the interaction between people. It emphasizes the relationship uh, between people. So we are not a people who only care about our own faith and our own entrance into paradise and our own fate and our own destination and our own lifestyle. Rather, we are a people who have a constant and continuous care about our community, about people around us, and about uh, all of those who share the same faith, even if they're very far away geographically. Right? There are many ahadiths where the Prophet ﷺ talked about the relationship between Muslims. Uh, he said it's like one body. Right? When, when one part is sick or feels the pain, the whole body panics, the whole body shares the pain. Allah also says that all believers are brothers despite our genetic differences. So we care about others and the way we care for others and the way we show our concern for others is to command the good and forbid the evil. Not out of criticism or condescension, not to compare who is better and who is worse, not to feel arrogant 
and to you know enforce your uh, and impose your opinion on people, but rather it is a kind of amr and nahu. It is a, a, a part of a, a kind of uh, commanding and forbidding that is out of love and concern, you know, and and uh, well wishing for the other person. And uh, so this is the intention, which is for the benefit of other people. We want humanity to live healthily, to live happily, to truly enjoy well-being. And there's no other way to do that except by the deen set by the creator of human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we shouldn't be shy about our religion. We shouldn't feel shy to tell people. Allah said, Allah said you know, ukhrijat nas, you are extracted, you are taken out for human beings, for humanity, not only for Muslims. So we shouldn't shy to tell people, no matter he's Muslim or non-Muslim, that this is the right way of living. You know, quitting alcohol is, the, is good for you. And praying five times a day is your, is your obligation towards your creator. To tell people, this is the way you should treat your parents, and this, this is the way you should speak. This is how you deal with your financial transactions. We shouldn't be shy to tell people about uh, this uh, system, which is the best system. Right? We, inna deena inna Allah al-Islam. It's the deen of Allah. It's not from any intelligent human being that can be surpassed by someone else. It is from the Lord of the world. So we tell people what is good and we forbid people from what is wrong uh, out of care, out of concern. And I want to give you uh, two examples of how this amru bil ma'ruf wa nahyu anil munkar was done in the past by the Prophet Sallallahu and also by uh, Ibn Mas'ud. Two examples. So uh, Ibn, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu once he saw a dream that he was taken for a tour around Jahannam, you can say. He was taken to see, to witness Jahannam. And he was really afraid. He said, A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah. When he woke up, he was afraid. So he requested his sister Hafsa, um, which is a wife of the Prophet, والسلام, to ask the Prophet what this dream meant. When the Prophet heard his dream, this is what he said. He said, Ni'ma Rajul Abdullah. What a great man is Abdullah. Abdullah is such a great man. He praised him first. He acknowledged his goodness. If only he prays a little more at night. If only he prays at night. This is the way he commands what is good. You know, out of care and concern and also with respectful and loving uh, attitude. So Ibn Umar said that after he heard that from the Prophet, he never one night missed out the night prayer. Every night he would uh, pray the night prayer. Ibn Mas'ud, this is after the Prophet ﷺ passed away. Uh, he was the governor of uh, Medina for a period of time. And one day he saw a bunch of young men around a, you know, a bonfire and they were playing musical instruments and they were drinking alcohol and they were singing and they were dancing they were having a good time, but, it, you know, in a haram way. They were entertaining themselves in an indecent manner. When Ibn Mas'ud saw this and, you know, the leader among the group, the, the one in the center called Zadan, he was playing musical instrument and singing very loudly. When Ibn Mas'ud saw this, anhu, he said, <coughs> When he said that, he left. He just walked away. He didn't, you know, uh, scold at them. He didn't shout at them. He just said this and left. So all the other uh, people around Zadan were shocked because they know who Ibn Mas'ud is. They know how heavy Ibn Mas'ud is. Uh, so they told Zadan, stop, stop, stop. And he said, what happened? What did he say? And they told him that it was the companion of the Prophet, Ibn Mas'ud. And he said, what a beautiful voice. What a beautiful voice. Because Zadan was saying, right? He said, what a beautiful voice. If only it was used for the recitation of the Book of Allah. How great would it be if this beautiful voice is used for the recitation of the Book of Allah? When Zadan heard this, he broke his musical instrument. <clears throat> he went after Ibn Mas'ud. And he said, can I learn from you? Can I learn how to recite the Qur'an from you? And later on, he became a very famous Qari, a very famous reciter of the Qur'an. This is the way that the Messenger of Allah and his companions uh, command people to do good and forbid people to do evil. They have a very loving, caring, respectful, and wise approach. And this is how we should do it as well. So, uh, you know, we're not shy to share with people our religion. Uh, and we do it in a wise manner. We call people to the path of Allah, to this healthy, uh, rational, lifestyle uh, and we believe in Allah and if we do all of this then alhamdulillah we are the best nation uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the wisdom and the ability to do so thank you for watching jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh